Hey everyone, welcome to Toon Talk Sessions, episode two. Uh, this week is a true treat. We had the chance to sit down and talk with two people over at PSYOP, an executive producer in Amanda Miller and director Jack Anderson, who currently work on and are working on the current season of Grandma's Cats Are Trying to Kill Her, uh, which you can find over on Amazon Prime. Uh, we talked about the show in episode 241, so I recommend you check that episode out. Uh, but in this episode, we dive into a little bit of the backstory, how Grandma's Cats came to be a series, what goes into the animation pipeline, and sort of working with other studios and artists to create this series, um, and also the challenges of coming up with a format, a structure for a show that's only two minutes in length, and how you yourself maybe can tell these two-minute stories. Uh, Brad and I had a lot of fun interviewing them so enjoy the episode and thanks for listening Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Toon Talk Weekly, but this is going to be a special episode of Toon Talk Weekly this week. Um, we are actually going to have a small interview here for you guys, uh, something that we've had a chance to do before, but I'm really excited because uh, recently we covered a series called Grandma's Cats Are Trying to Kill Her, and then I was hit up by someone uh, from the company PSYOP who actually worked on the show. So um, we of course have Brad here with us. What's up, Brad? Hey, how you doing? And uh, this is Brad's first interview with the show, too, so that's a lot of fun. But we should uh, get to our guests, of course. Uh, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Hi, uh, my name is Amanda Miller. I'm an executive producer at PSYOP in our Venice office. And I'm Jack. I'm a director here at PSYOP. Awesome. Um, yeah, I can't remember um, exactly the name of, I'm going to mispronounce, I want to say Alexi. Um, hit me up on Twitter. Uh-huh. Uh, he saw that we had posted about the show and got me in contact with you guys. So welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so yeah, it was only like what two weeks ago we watched the cartoon. So it's, <laughs> we go through so many cartoons. It's like uh, it's crazy that it was just that short ago. <laughs> yeah, it was only two weeks ago, and you guys were like the fastest ever to be like we would love to talk about that show. So we're very excited <laughs> to talk to you guys. We're very excited that you want to talk about it. Yeah, oh, of course. We don't get to talk about it a lot. <laughs> oh, awesome. Well, um, why don't you guys talk a little bit about what you do at um, PSYOP, and then kind of we'll, we'll eventually transition here into the, uh, into the show. Sure. Um, so PSYOP, I'll tell you a little bit about PSYOP, too, mm-hmm. because it's a, it's a production company. It's an animation production company. We've been around since 99, started in New York, went, moved, opened an office in L.A. in 2010, and we've always been known for commercial work. Um, so we have a robust pipeline and what, probably 16 directors, I think, but most of the work that we handle is in the commercial space. One of our bigger clients is Supercell's Clash of Clans and Clash Royale, and we also do a lot of work for Cricket, um, Coca-Cola, AT&T, Apple, Samsung. Um, I'm an executive producer that handles the Supercell work, and I also manage all of the original content at PSYOP. And I've been here two years. Um, I graduated college, I think about four years ago, um, and I made a short film for my thesis, which was kind of this animated uh, robot movie called Wire Cutters. Um, And that's how I ended up meeting PSYOP, uh, was kind of through that of just getting some views online and ended up being able to meet PSYOP through that. And they brought me on as a director and I kind of started out doing more previs type stuff and animation and quickly was able to work my way up. and. Yeah, it's been an amazing, amazing opportunity as a young filmmaker who's interested in animation and storytelling and um, now TV and stuff. So I'll caveat to you, Amanda has been the one that's been doing Grandma's Cats from the beginning, and I'm just coming on now. Mm -hmm. So um, I I haven't done anything that's currently out yet. So I've been working on the new season with Amanda. Well, then we have the new season to look forward to, of course. (laughs) So the the other part that you guys had in your your podcast, which is we are in the third season. Oh, nice. We're breaking news (laughs) on the top of it here. Get it out on the wire. Beep, 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 beep. 
And we don't we don't talk a ton about commercial work, but um, Brad and I work for Brad's company. It's just called Loose Keys, and we do videos for clients, m- mostly web videos. But uh, we don't talk a ton about commercial work here. But I will say that we have loved the Clash videos. Anybody should go check those out, whether you think it's an ad or not. Like the stories and the characters are great. Like you guys did a fantastic job on those. Thanks, thanks. Com- it's you. been really fun. Complete, awesome complete aside. <laughs> yeah, we're they're, they're great. Uh, so let's get into Grandma's Cats Are Trying to Kill Her, not just a funny name, but also a fun show. Um, where did this idea come from? Uh, wh- like, this seems to, I don't know how I ended up finding it. I think it was sort of uh, through Amazon Video or something. But uh, where did the, the genesis of the show come from? It's a good question. It's kind of a bigger answer than I think what you're really wanting. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I introduced Saif as a commercial production company, because a lot of people that are in commercials you know, have a lot of ideas that they want to do that aren't necessarily commercial related and are interested in getting into the originals field. So I guess about four years ago, maybe we did an internal pitch fest and we asked um, employees to come and pitch any ideas that they might have. And one of the ideas that was pitched was grandma's cats are trying to kill her. And the story was developed. It was actually an idea from an artist in our New York office. Um, We developed the story and we took it around town to pitch it to all the different networks and stuff like that. And we ended up partnering with DreamWorks Awesomeness TV. So And after listening to your last podcast, I think I might actually answer a lot of the questions that you guys have about it. So we developed it internally. We did a deck for it. We came up with like, you know, the backstory of the world, the characters, all the motivations, a bunch of episode ideas, and then partnered with DreamWorks and Awesomeness TV does super short format content. So um, we did two seasons with them. We're going into our third season and I don't know if I answered your question. Did you did you guys did you guys plan to do longer episodes and just happen to be they do short content so you kind of adapted for that? Yeah. So actually the the show has a bible behind it with a lot more of a backstory and a deeper larger universe, but because it's with DreamWorks and the budgets allow for about 2 minutes and you have to cram a lot of storytelling into that 2 minutes and also assume that viewers have never seen another one. So each episode has to work on its own. Um, that's why it exists in the format that it does. I, yeah, I was just going to say, I, this is jumping ahead a little bit, but I think what's really interesting about how the space has evolved for these more online type series is originally when this came out, I think it was a lot more of these two minute chunk by chunk episodes, but now at least how things are playing on Amazon or even on YouTube is it's so much about these auto playing videos and how you can sit down and before you know it, pretty much just blow through the whole thing in like 30 minutes or 40 minutes. And so moving forward, that's been something that's been super fun about how we're taking the show is figuring out a way that it can still be almost these two minute moments that still have you know, a way that the cats are trying to kill grandma, but also bring in like a larger structural arc. So it is kind of this weird new medium right now for creating content that I think has been really interesting to try and figure out how to work with. Yeah. Oh, so that's almost your way around doing longer episodes than trying to figure out how to do those longer story arcs without breaking that format. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, believe me, we would love to do longer episodes. I wish it was an 11, but um, the budgets and just the nature of how it's distributed work in a two minute format. So Uh for the first two seasons, every episode had to establish that Lucas has a loving relationship with grandma, that the cats are trying to kill her and that he's going to stop them. And it had a very clear beginning, middle and an end. And the exercise that we were really doing was how do you find a fresh way to kill grandma? And I can (laughs) tell you from experience, after you think of 19 ways to kill grandma, you start feeling like you're running out of options. So (laughs) season three, we've been able to work with our partners at DreamWorks Mm -hmm. and decide that season three is going to be more like an actual 22 minute episode would be of a regular television show. And then it does have this overarching quest that Lucas is going on to try to figure out why the cats are killing grandma. But at the same time, each chunk of that has to still work like a bottle episode in that, We set up that they're trying to kill her and he defeats them. Mm -hmm. And then in that quest, he has to find one little clue that gets him closer to his larger question. So now you guys have established this structure that's very clear in the two minute format. Like uh, I watched a couple episodes this afternoon. And again, it was the sort of rise and fall of the action of like 
the resolution of the grandma. So to tackle that in season three, do you now have to like leave a little bit of space to introduce these threads that are going to go through all the episodes? Yeah, I mean, it's honestly, it, it's been a challenge that we've been getting better and better at as the season has gone through on how we pack this all into two minutes because it definitely is a lot. I think what we figured out that's worked really well is like some episodes are more of just plain old grandma kill or trying to kill grandma. Um, and I feel like after we do one of those in the next episode can be really light on that and can be more about this overarching structure. And sure, there's more of a, a quick moment where something happens that reinforces the theme of the title and everything, but um, it isn't quite so heavy on that. So mm -hmm. it seems like that's been kind of our best way right now is to just alternate episodes. Yeah. And you just realize you have to be super efficient. <laughs> oh, for sure. It's something we talk about uh, a lot on our show. We've been doing our podcast for about four years, so we've watched a lot of cartoons uh, every single week. Uh, but <laughs> s something we bring up a lot is that a lot of times cartoons for us tend to be a second screen experience um, these days. And so a format like Grandma's Cats is interesting because we talked about, oh, I might put this on in the background and watch. And Grandma's Cats seemed completely suited for that or completely suited for maybe like a mobile audience or something. If platforms let you do two minute episodes, you kind of consume a little bit of story that's better than just, I don't know, some crap that was put out. Like you guys actually put a lot of work in actual like cartoon animation that is fit for television into these little tiny stories. Yeah, it's interesting. Like I think about the first time that we dropped a clash spot almost five years ago and like we almost killed ourselves. People almost died. We, had to <laughs> go fast. And we shipped it on like, I think it was December 23rd. And I think I saw the sun come up like four or five times in a row at the office oh, and we goodness. were just exhausted and we drop it. And then the next morning I woke up and it had 10 million views. And I was like, yeah. or no, it was like 1 million view. And then an hour later, it was 5 million views. Mm -hmm. And then an hour later, it was 7.5 million views. And I was texting with the director and te texting with our managing director. And it was like, oh my God, we're internet famous. People are really <laughs> watching this. This must be a mistake. What is going on? And so you kind of see how that watching format had influenced the media in the same way that grandma's cats had as well. Like you just, you go for like these little bite sized things and that was, you kind of fire it off into the world and hope that people see it. And it has actually really changed a lot to the point where you can control whether or not if somebody watches one that they are actually going to watch the one after that um, or something related mm -hmm. yeah. depending on how much you pay YouTube. <laughs> That's probably one of our favorite, or at least one of my favorite things of working on it is like, like you you know, most of our jobs are making, that's great. But even like a two minute commercial would be a complete luxury for us. Like I spend most of my time making 15 second commercials or now even six second commercials. And so getting to have a little bit more playground for that, except also more like we have quite a bit of creative control, I'd say on, uh, on this project, you know, there's not too many rungs and just in the commercial space, you know, there's usually an agency and then there's a client on top of that. And they're usually the ones coming with the ideas as well, which, you know, is also the super great fun experience. But this, I feel like, is makes us much better at creating commercials when we get kind of have some fun coming up with story ideas. And just it seems like more of a creative exercise for us that we can definitely put back into our into our commercial work. And so. What about the, is there anything that's different about the animation pipeline, the actual doing the work of a television cartoon series that um, you guys have experienced creating Grandma's Cats versus what you've done in the past historically with commercial projects? Oh, yeah, totally. Um, we actually use a pipeline outside of our building because mm -hmm. our pipeline is mostly CG. So we just don't have a stable of 2D character animators here. Um, so we use some people in northern england for the animation we do the design with one of our favorite designers who's in tel aviv mm -hmm. the writer used to live in portland now lives in north hollywood um we record our audio actually in hollywood uh fortunately the client's right up the street dreamworks is right up the street um <laughs> But yeah, you kind of spread it all over the world. But, you know, honestly, we do that with all of our work because you kind of want to pull in the right person for the job. And sometimes they live in your city and sometimes they live halfway around the world. Yeah, I'd say the biggest difference that 
I experience for sure is like on our CG projects, we usually just have like more time to like, if you think about it, like a 15 second commercial, we still spend a couple months working on and like, they're just, it's built into our pipeline and production. Just so many like multiple rounds of storyboards and like multiple rounds of it, like, you know, animation dailies every day for weeks. And here, you know, we just have the timelines tighter and we just have fewer shots to get things. And so we've learned that our episodes are more successful the more that like we really write out a script and like get really into the details because there's just not as much time to experiment and explore of, oh, well, ex find a lot out in storyboarding and then animating. We, we really need to like set that blueprint right at the beginning. Uh, to get and just get it seen through. Yeah, because it's cheap to animate or it's cheap to iterate in the boarding process and it's expensive to iterate in the animation process. Mm -hmm. And right. cartoons don't have big budgets. So Jack and I spent a lot of time kind of figuring it out up front. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So I was going to ask getting into like the story and I don't, I guess we don't need to know the whole Bible cause I'm sure it's extensive, but i um, pulling from well, kind you of can just watch season three. <laughs> uh, well now I can't, now I can't wait. This is, this whole interview is just a teaser for, for what's coming next. Um, I guess talking up to this point and I guess don't give away anything for season three, but like, what is it about the world of grandma's cats that you guys have had kind of the most fun uh, being a part of, whether it be the characters, kind of the stories you get to tell, you did mention all the fun and crazy ways that you do have to come up with killing grandma. Um, what's kind of some of the, the most fun stuff to work on? Well, not to say too much about season three, but in the past, um, yeah, I, I guess, no, that's actually a really <laughs> hard question. Also, uh, yeah, one of my favorite things lately has been like, as far as storytelling goes, I'm like a super logical, like I'm super strict about making sure things make sense in the world and like didn't just happen for no reason. And what's been fun uh, with working on these new scripts is while well, the premise is so wacky, trying to figure out like logical reasons for like, <laughs> we're just doing an episode now where the cats have a chainsaw. It's like, well, how did they, they realistically like why do they have a chainsaw next to them and kind of reverse engineering that um to make some amount of sense and helps that grandma is kind of this crazy personality who can integrate crazy things um so yeah that, that's been something i've had a lot of fun with lately yeah i mean when you start running out of ways to kill grandma um and they get weirder and weirder that's been fun like the teenage bull was kind of a fun one that was season mm -hmm. two yeah, and then also seeing how far you can push it in a kid's cartoon. Like, right. we we had a couple of rounds of design when we had Lucas imagine Grandma getting her head cut off with the windmill. You know, could we have the bone poking out of her neck? No, right. we could not. But we tried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that, I mean, that's the target audience, right, is kids, even though we as adults are making the animation. I'm sure that there are certain things you guys have to keep under wraps of, like, how how gruesome could Grandma's death be in a in a show as innocent as this? Right. And no drugs, no alcohol, which would really be my go-to for a way to kill somebody easily. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly I'm, I'm out of ways now. <laughs> yeah. It's funny that you mentioned how like, you felt like maybe there were times where it is challenging to come up with new ideas to kill grandma and how um, I like you talking about the storytelling of uh, being a, um, a logical storyteller and making it make sense. I just watched an episode where for whatever reason, grandma has a wrestling ring in her living room right now. And, for, and I'm just at the point now where I don't question it. You guys have built this world into such a great place <laughs> that I'm like, it, it makes sense to me at this point because I've seen like, it just seems to get a little bit wackier each time. It's like a tiny dose. And so it seems to just kind of follow up on each other. Yeah, I think that was definitely part of running out of ways to kill grandma. Um, and the writer actually came up with that one because he's doing a documentary about wrestlers. And so he's like, what if we made a wrestling ring? And because we're in a cartoon world, cats can totally build wrestling rings and they can order things on the Internet. They have wallets and credit cards mm -hmm. and contact with aliens. <laughs> Nice. Don't tease a wrestling documentary for Jake. He's going to be all over that. <laughs> 
if it's wrestling robots or pizza that's the episode of cartoons that i will watch that's uh <laughs> i'm still 13 years old i swear um and one of my favorite things that's i think is pretty subtle i actually felt like this was more for adults with the show is that uh grandma cannot remember lucas's name uh, mm -hmm. every single episode it's the tiniest thing that i feel like as a kid maybe as a joke that it doesn't like fall on him but like when it's Leroy and Lemmy or like something weird every single time, that's almost like the bit that I'm waiting for now when I check out a new episode. So I just, that was one of my favorite small things about the show. And do you remember the origin of that? I mean, honestly, like our writer, Wes McGarry, has brought a lot to this and he's mm -hmm. such a weird dude that he um, has come up with a lot of wacky ideas. Yeah, I think it just appeared in one script and then it just became a thing. Yeah, there's so much he sprinkles in that like, I don't catch sometimes until even we're recording the voiceover. And it's like, wow, that's such a funny line. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, so, of course, the show is heading into its third season, and we don't want to spoil any of that. But um, how, how, how has it been kind of like working on this Latin next season of the show? Um, are there plans to continue the show after that? Um, what, what would you guys like to see? Where would you like to see Grandma's Cats in the next few years? Um, honestly, it's been, it's been great because our – our executive at DreamWorks is awesome. Everybody's been really supportive. They, the notes are generally just things like story notes that help make it better. And so now that we've been into our third season where we're expanding the world a little bit, um, if we get a fourth season, and hopefully we will, then we'll get to continue to tell that story, you know, with an overarching thread instead of just going back to killing grandma. Um, I mean, in a perfect world, you want to turn it into a 11 minute show, right? Like, and mm -hmm. make it for a larger streaming service or for television. So I think that would be the, the perfect world, but we'll see. Yeah. I think like this season for sure. And you'll see it when it comes out, but like, as Amanda was saying, it was a lot of trying to get us to bridge the gap into something bigger, I guess. And I feel like where this is leaving us now, like we're able to set up a lot of kind of bones for some really interesting things to happen in the future without really giving anything away. But yeah, I just feel su super excited about like all of the new situations we've been able to set up and new locations and new characters and all of that. So yeah, I feel like it's just really exciting where it could go. Yeah. I mean, it's cool because going back to the whole distribution thing, it's, you're, it's easier for small creators to make stuff and put it on the internet and grow it into something that's real. Like mm -hmm. I have a friend that does the real cat agent cartoon and that started as a little two minuter with six point harness. And now they just dropped, I think the second or third episode of the 11 minute season on VRV mm -hmm. and or Verve. Um, yeah. So, you know, and, and that, that's a show that has, has an arc that stretches over the whole thing too. So, yeah, it's kind of the wild west out there in a good way. If you can scrape together some resources to get your stuff made and have a cool story, the world is your oyster. Right. Exciting. Yeah, I think uh, people should like, uh, especially animators even doing what Brad and I do with commercial stuff during the day. Obviously, we all have kind of goals in this role. Um like a dream projects you'd like to work on or like personal projects you'd like to get to a cartoon is something that Brad and I have always talked about, but of course still haven't, <laughs> still haven't created, but Time I think it gets away from me. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think what you guys have created in grandma's cats, albeit, you know, with a team and stuff is really inspiring for artists who are looking for a personal project. Like you just gave a good example of a, a two minute cartoon as like a, a, a good proof of concept for something that could turn into a, a more full length cartoon down the road. Yeah. 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 We don't like, I, I definitely feel like when I'm working solely on commercials, start getting kind of jaded about like, Oh, a project needs to be like this full blown CG thing. That's super high detailed, all of that. But I guess, you know, projects like this are a good reminder to us that, um, you know, what makes things can be pretty simple animation wise and still find an audience online. Like I actually, when a project, when, when one of these episodes is all said and done, it's, kind of interesting to go back and watch it and realize how simple a lot of the animation is and we are able to create it very efficiently and then just with you know interesting dialogue and you know great sound effects and really cool art um you know it's still able to feel like a complete episode 
Yeah. And you know, I don't, I went to the Titmouse five second night on Friday. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever watched that stuff online because they post it all on YouTube okay. and that's something that's over the course of the year and they'll let them work on what's supposed to be and sometimes isn't sometimes isn't a five second piece of animation they can use any resources they need to in the studio sometimes they actually book people against the project so they pay them to work on their five second piece and you watch you know an hour and a half this body of work is like an hour and a half long all made up of very short pieces of animation and some of them are really great and Mm -hmm. do some really interesting storytelling that's not super polished but is inspiring and cool and really is the voice of the creator just like more of the convergence of it is the wild west out here that there isn't necessarily a formula to reaching cartoon status that you need to produce a full half hour or full 15 minutes anymore it seems like you can you can be the grandma's cats of the world and successfully tell a story and have an arc in just two minutes at a time and before you know it the next one's playing and you're back in that world again <laughs> right. so yeah. keep, your, keep your day job making commercials and then do cartoons at night <laughs> <laughs> i think the thing from like a studio perspective is no like it's never going to be like, you know, the biggest moneymaker from a studio's perspective, if you're just looking at like, you know, the budgets and all of that, but it's what's more exciting, I think for a place like us is that it just is invigorating people that get to work on it and making them feel more creative and stuff. And that's just going to trickle down into our commercial work. And, you know, something that we learned having fun on this could help us win a pitch down, down the line for a bigger commercial or, um, you know, just get a fresh idea. So I do think, you know, these kind of creative side projects um, have many benefits aside from uh, being something that you can find an audience with. Yeah. And it's, well, yes, this is not our core business. Um, <laughs> it is it's intended to be more than just a side project because PSYOP is a studio that has a lot of like really unique original thinkers in it. And, um, and we are making an actual push into, into content outside of commercials. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. If I could have even a overarching goal outside of Grandma's Cats, but within that realm, it would be a year from now for us to have multiple other Grandma's Cats-esque things of, you know, just more, uh, another series or some other forms of content that we're making originally as well. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. And I mean, Grandma's Cats even kind of like sticks out as its own unique thing on on your portfolio site, like seeing it. It's just like, oh, you guys do a cartoon now. Like, that's a rad thing. I've known, you know, animators in the space know PSYOP for years for for the commercial work. But now seeing that there's also an entertainment piece there is is pretty radical. I don't think I've said the full word radical in years. I don't know where that came from. (laughs) Um, Cool. Well, is there anything else you guys want to add about Grandma's Cats that we didn't touch on today or, or where people can go find it and when they can look forward to the next season? We are going to be behind a paywall on Amazon Prime. We're getting mm-hmm. fancy um, because no, we attract eyeballs. And I think we're not going to be live until until the summer, actually. Okay. Um, again, going back to how this distribution media tends to move around a lot. Um, and there's a special app. There's an Amazon app for kids that this is going to be featured on. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like we're not too far out from getting more of Grandma's Cats. If you need more than the the two seasons that you guys have already seen at this point. Um, yeah, I don't, Brad, anything else to add from you? No, that's it. I'm going to have to catch up on some episodes. <laughs> well, it shouldn't take you too long either because I kept saying in, in our in our recording a couple of weeks ago that they were two minutes long. And it's so funny to host a podcast sometimes that's half an hour long. And we talked about a two minute cartoon. I felt like I was like, man, we had a lot to say. That's so silly. <laughs> Um, yeah but they are fast blinking blinking on this one oh for sure well thank you guys so much for your time thanks for coming on and describing a little bit about grandma's cats and more of the backstory because i'm sure we probably sounded sort of confused and and not quite sure what the pipeline was like um but i'm glad you guys were able to come on and share kind of with our listeners um what goes into making the show and hey maybe we'll see more of these format shows in the future out of both you guys and maybe some of our listeners cool awesome thanks Thanks for for watching it Take care. Bye, guys. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Thanks. To learn more about the show, visit ToonTalkWeekly.com or follow us on Twitter at ToonTalkWeekly. Weekly.